Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're taking a look at the JoySky Power PS4 Pro Controller. It's a PS5 themed controller that works on the PS4. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, JoySky Power provided this PS4 controller for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. On the box, it says P4 Plus instead of PS4 Pro. It says it's a wireless controller compatible with PS4, PS5, and PC. The back of the box says it has double vibration, adaptive triggers, it's compatible with the charging station, it has a built-in microphone, and it has signature comfort. Included in the box is a USB-C cable, a user manual, and the JoySky Power controller, which looks extremely similar to the DualSense controller. On the bottom of this controller, we can see a headphone jack, and just above it is that little micro microphone port. On the top of the controller, we have a USB-C port. Here's a quick look at the back of the controller. And looking at the face of this controller, the layout is pretty much the exact same as the DualSense controller, but there are a couple minor differences. We have a home button here instead of the PS button. There's a turbo button and the labeling on the buttons on the right are a little bit different than DualSense. Now holding this controller feels very similar to a DualSense controller. I'll compare the two in just a second here, but it does feel a little bit cheaper. It's lighter, the buttons don't necessarily feel as good, especially the triggers on the back. I wasn't a big fan of how these triggers initially felt, but I'm guessing that's because the controller is a fraction of the price. The D-pad on this feels a little bit spongy. The joysticks don't feel that expensive, but they are smooth. And the face buttons here are a little bit more stiff than a DualSense controller. Speaking of DualSense, here is the JoySky Power controller side by side with that DualSense controller, and the form here is almost the exact same. I would argue that they almost use the exact same molds. There is a huge weight difference though between the DualSense and this JoySky Power. The JoySky Power is considerably lighter. In addition to that, I don't know if you can see this in the camera very well, but the JoySky Power is smooth all the way around, whereas the back of the DualSense controller does have that texture. Here's a comparison between the two tops of the controllers. And here are the two bottoms. If you look closely here, there's also a slight color difference between the two. Comparing these side by side, and it's very easy to tell which controller is more expensive, the DualSense feels a lot more substantial. So I thoroughly tested out the JoySky Power on my PS4 and on my PC. When I was playing games, I thought there might be a little bit of input lag here. I was noticing some stuff wasn't necessarily coming out as intended and checking it out on Street Fighter V here in training mode, and yes, there is quite a bit of input delay in wireless mode. If you're trying to use this controller with games that require precision, you might not have the best time here. Just for comparison, this is the DualShock 4, and you can see how much more responsive it is. So let's go over what I liked and what I didn't like about the JoySky Power PS4 Pro controller, and we'll start out here with what I liked. I like that the form factor on this is very similar to a DualSense controller. I think that is pretty cool, and I think it's also pretty cool that it works on PS4. I also like that I didn't get a controller timeout on this. It worked absolutely fine for longer gaming sessions. Now getting into what I didn't like about this controller. There are a few things here. First and foremost, the box advertised this as having vibration. Mine didn't. On PS4 and on PC, no matter what game I played, I couldn't get any vibration in this controller, and that's a bit of a bummer here. I don't know if there's actually vibration motors in it, I didn't open it up and check, but at the same time here, you shouldn't really have to check if it's advertised on the box. I'm wondering if my controller is just defective here, but if it is defective out of the box, that's really not a good sign. The second thing I don't like about this controller is the fact that it has so much input latency in wireless mode on PS4. I would say it's pretty much borderline unacceptable the amount of time it takes after you press a button to actually register on your screen. If you're competitively gaming, even if you're casually gaming here and you have any sort of precise movements, well this controller is probably going to cause some frustration. The next thing I don't like about this controller are the triggers and bumpers. So the bumpers here feel incredibly cheap. Uh, they are very wobbly and not very stable, and the triggers here don't feel very smooth. Taking a look at the price of this controller, right now it's sitting at $38 overall, which is considerably cheaper than a DualShock 4 controller, which sits between $60 to $65. Bucks. So it's about $22 to $27-ish cheaper than a DualShock 4. At $38 overall, given the faults here, I don't even think I can recommend this at this price. At the end of the day here, I want to give a big shout out to JoySky Power for being brave enough to provide this for a fair and honest review. I think they absolutely nailed the styling, it's just the performance that drags this controller down. 
Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on the JoySky Power PS4 Pro controller in the comments below. If there's another controller you want me to check out, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.